Hey, you found the Sales Hunter Podcast. I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. And on today's show, we have got Richard Bliss. He's the Jedi Master of all things LinkedIn, LinkedIn Insights. His insights have been featured on CNN, NBC, ABC, Wired, and numerous other media locations. He's the founder of Bliss Point, a consulting firm focused on helping leaders navigate LinkedIn. And he, like me, is a graduate of Timberline High School. Okay, the last part is trivia nobody cares about. Let's get on with the show, shall we? Well, I'd like to say we get on with the show if I could knew what buttons to push. We'll get it going here right now. You're listening to the Sales Hunter Podcast with Mark Hunter, where the focus is to help you as a sales leader sell with confidence and integrity. And now here's your host. When it comes to closing deals, Calendly knows how important maintaining momentum is for your sales team. Calendly provides the automation you need to connect with your best leads faster and schedule every meeting throughout your sales cycle. Prevent scheduling delays that stall deals and let your team focus on what they do best, driving revenue. Request your demo of Calendly today. And hey, it is time for Richard Bliss. Let's let's get him in here. Richard, how are you? Doing well, Mark. How about yourself? I, I won't ask you to sing the uh, Timberline High School fight song, but that's a bizarre piece of trivia, isn't it? Rise and shout, the blazers are out. Is that was that? that? No, is that's that, the, is that, I no, have, no, I have, I have, I have no to go, clue. That's college. Because, that was college. Uh, okay, I was, was going to say clearly because I made the upper half of my class possible, so I'm not sure about you. But anyway, <laughs> hey, let's talk about LinkedIn because I first met you a year ago at an event and was absolutely blown away. Uh, by the content that you shared. Where do people get it all wrong when it comes to LinkedIn? Well, they get it all wrong is that they think that, and, and by the way, that was just a fantastic event. I enjoyed meeting you there. We had a lot of mutual connections. And then it was you reading my book where you discovered that we we both graduated from the same high school in Lacey, Washington. Uh, which, that, which is was, just, that is just bizarre. Yeah. Right? You're, I'm, I'm sure you're reading it going, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. And and people are commenting, okay, get out of the timbers and get on with the show. So <laughs> here we go. I love so, it. I love it. So the key thing for LinkedIn was that LinkedIn, so many people get it wrong because they think it's like the other social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. These have a revenue model that drives a certain kind of behavior. They make their money off of advertising, all of their money off of advertising which means that their content or the way you post content on their platform is designed to attract as many eyeballs as possible to be entertained, to be distracted, to be enraged. These are the things that makes money for those other social media platforms. So when people come from Facebook or TikTok and they come to LinkedIn, they're like, oh, it's just another social media platform. I'll use the same skills, abilities, and techniques. Not realizing that those I call it sabotaging. Your Instagram habits are sabotaging your efforts to reach an audience on LinkedIn because the money, the revenue doesn't come from advertising primarily. Some of it does. It primarily comes from paying customers like myself, my clients who are using Sales Navigator, LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn uh, Premier and Premium, excuse me, Premium, and then LinkedIn Recruiter. 80% of their revenue is coming from a paying experience, which means LinkedIn needs to make that sure that experience is valuable enough that people keep coming back. So that's what they get wrong is taking habits from link uh, from other social media platforms and putting them onto LinkedIn. Okay. Now you just, you just dispelled a huge myth right there. Okay. And I've never had it explained to me like that. So thank you. It really is because they really look at it as a content machine, not a an advertising platform. And, so to speak. and let me modify that a conversation machine oh, conversation. Right? Okay. They LinkedIn is asking one question. Whenever you put out a post on LinkedIn, they have one question. Did you start a conversation? Not, did you entertain with a cat riding a Roomba? Not, did you enrage with some way off crazy uh, theory? No. Did you start a conversation that showed value to the platform? And that's where the challenge comes in is that most people post and ghost. They're using these plat platforms as dumping grounds for their marketing content. And LinkedIn says, we will not be your dumping ground. So we will prevent you, hide, uh, whatever you want to call it, hide, uh, censor, keep 
away from the, our audience, your content that is not bringing value to our platform. I like that comment, post and ghost. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I love post that. and ghost. So, yeah, there's I, all kinds of them, but that's I, one of them. Yeah. I, I love that. So this whole thing that if you do post and ghost, they're going, they're going to penalize you. Now, how do they penalize you? So it's a great, uh, great question because what they're doing, is, let's start from the basics. When you put out a post on LinkedIn, and Mark, you've got thousands of people following you on LinkedIn. When you put out a post on LinkedIn, LinkedIn does not show it to those people. And that was when I was on you've stage. You've just disappointed me. You've just, you've just let well, me. Well, there was, I remember there were audible gasps from the audience that you were sitting in when I oh, made I know. That, that, yeah. Right? Yes. LinkedIn, it, because there's no filter there. If I can access 100% of my audience with no filter, then I control the experience for my audience on LinkedIn's platform. And LinkedIn's like, that is not what we're going to allow. So instead, when I post something on LinkedIn, they're going to show it to a sliver of my audience, a tiny sliver. 10% or less of my audience is going to see my content. Now, they're going to use the audience to determine if the content is worthy of a conversation by measuring and tracking how many comments you generate and respond to in the first 90 minutes of that conversation. That will tell them whether there's value here. Now, just as a warning, Mark, a lot of people are aware, uh, there are a lot of people who are aware of that. And so they joined something called a pod. And a pod is nothing more than an artificial means of generating comments to boost artificially a post from strangers. It's against the terms of service of LinkedIn. And I share often with the audience, my audiences, as a company, as an organization, as a group, for example, the NSA that you belong to, the National yes. Speakers Association, having them come together to comment on your content, they're part of a natural audience for you and the network you belong to. But participating with random people just jumping in saying, congrats, well done, for the sole purpose of fooling the algorithm, is against the terms of service and LinkedIn figures that out in a hurry. So you'll get a spike and then it'll cap because it'll notice that these comments really aren't coming and participating in the conversation. Okay, so how do they catch on to that? How, how, how do they find out? Because again, I've got some second level people which will comment on various posts I have. Is that is that good or is that bad? So first of all, LinkedIn does not show your content to anyone that you're not connected to unless someone you're connected to interacts with the content. So let me be clear uh -huh. here. I have a first degree connection that's not connected to you. I comment on your post. You just made one a few hours ago. If I go and comment on that post a few hours ago, LinkedIn's going to pick up my comment, your post, and put it in front of my audience that you're not connected to. Okay, so this means that you're only going to see content that your audience is interacting with. Now, LinkedIn's going to measure and watch. And what's going to happen, there's a, there's a tipping point. And once that tipping point is hit, and it's about, let's say, one to 2,000 impressions on your post in the first 24 hours, that tells LinkedIn's algorithm, boom, we got something, we got something hot here. We've shown it to 1,000 people. It's getting some traction. Now is the secret that almost no one knows. LinkedIn takes that content algorithm and hands it to a human editor. They actually hand it over to somebody? An actual, there are 50 editors that control all of the content on LinkedIn. 50, not, and not you 10. And you probably know who those where those 50 people live, right? I do not. Okay. <laughs> Even if I did, that would be my answer. I do not. But that means they're able to determine and look at the comments quickly and determine if this is a real conversation or is this just a spoof? And if it's just a, an effort to goose the algorithm, boom, your reach stops. It's like you hit a wall, boom, because they'll turn the algorithm off to say, stop doing that. But now if the editor sees it and says, hey, there's a conversation going on here, they hand it back to the algorithm and it kind of repeats that on a bigger level and a bigger level and a bigger level. So as, those, as that conversation keeps going, your audience keeps growing. Here's the fundamental difference, Mark, on other social media platforms, the reach of the audience first drives the engagement. On LinkedIn, the reach of the engagement draws the drives the audience. And so it's a fundamental difference. Getting those conversations early on is what causes LinkedIn to show it to a wider audience. And what's the definition of a conversation? Five words in a comment is the secret. You got a, a, a comment. So you did a great job would technically be a comment. 
But how would you respond to that? And what does my audience? So you make a post. I say, Mark, you did a great job. Okay. This is a habit I picked up or people have picked up from Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm responding to you, forgetting that I have 118,000 people who follow me on LinkedIn. I just take, took that comment and put it in front of them with no context, no explanation, no idea of what I'm trying to do. Instead, every person who's out on LinkedIn trying to make a living by selling their solutions should be thinking every comment I make needs to be speaking to this wider audience, not just to the person who created the piece of content. Fascinating. Can you give us a couple of examples on that? Yeah. So, um, so let's suppose you make a post about selling because that's something you know a lot about. Yeah. So I make a living uh, similar to you. I present and train salespeople, in my case, tech companies here in Silicon Valley where I live. So I know they're listening to me. So I can make a post every day and hopefully they see it. Or I can go comment on your post about the importance of selling and some of the key elements that you've pointed out in the sales process. I'm going to comment on that saying, Mark, you make a great point here. I'm going to rephrase what you said. You pointed out one, two, and three. I've discovered as I work with my clients, these three elements are so critical to solutions. And here's how we weave it into our training that we do around social selling and LinkedIn. Great uh, post. Thanks for sharing. Now, I have, I re I've identified you in the comment, Mark, even though, even though I'm responding to you, I need my audience to know who this is. Mm -hmm. I've restated your position so that people know what I'm commenting on. And then I've added my own spin or my own value to the second half of that comment. Oftentimes the comment can be longer than the post. Wow. This and is, this is taking some time. This is, it, this is, this is a lot longer than just hitting an emoji. Oh yes. And hitting an emoji brings no value to a conversation. Can you imagine if you were standing at a networking event and somebody said something and you just looked at them and went, Oh, right. And then you went, Oh, you'd be like, wow. that's, that's your participate in my conversation. And LinkedIn's like, those don't count. And so that's the difference. And that's the, when it comes to selling, that's the huge difference of why LinkedIn is so powerful. If you take the opportunity of commenting on other people's content. Now I would comment on your content, but I could also go comment on my prospects content. If they okay. leave something out there, why won't I chime in? I want them to recognize, know who I am. Mark, I did a, a post. Uh, I, I did a call this morning with my grandson. He's eight. He called me up, he got on a Zoom call and team call and says, I want to do a post on LinkedIn. About what? About how to build relationships on LinkedIn. I'm like, okay. Right? And what did he say? It's the same thing as being in the third grade. Be nice, go up and meet people, talk to them, ask them questions, see if they want to play basketball. And well, that case, it was him being a little excited about basketball. But it made sense. On LinkedIn, we should be doing all of those same things. Wow. Okay. Now that, that is, you just burst, you burst another bubble. In fact, five bubbles right there, because you said, instead of putting another posting out there, you should really go, po go comment on other people's posts. So yeah. is that just as, as meaningful? You could get away with, I have a great slide. I think I shared it in the presentation I did uh, that you were sitting in on. If you just comment on two to three people's posts a day, and which will take you about 10 minutes, and you can, these are people you follow, people you um, can look up in the news, leads that you've put into your sales navigate. It doesn't matter. But you go find these individuals and you come in on three posts a day. At the end of a week, I can promise your listeners that if they do that strategy alone, don't post anything, just comment, that the number of people looking at their profile views will jump by 100 to 300% over the previous week, simply because they were commenting on other people's conversations. Now, why is it important that they come and look at your LinkedIn profile? A couple of reasons. It tells you, are you reaching the right out audience? It tells you and shows you any prospects you might have. They're like, who is this individual sharing this really insightful information that I'm finding valuable? And then from there, you can continue the sales process of nurturing and engaging with those people. But I'm telling you, Three comments a day over a five-day period will see a huge increase in the amount of people asking for connection requests, looking at your profile, wanting to send you messages. Now, they could be trying to sell you something, 
we're in that business. We understand that. But a lot of times they're interested in getting to know you better because you're providing insights in the conversations they're interested in, not just trying to create content where you drive people to you. Wow. That's that's fascinating. Now, I got some more questions I want to ask you about content and so forth. But right now, we need to thank the great people of Calendly for their sponsorship. If you're ready to get control of your calendar and book more high value meetings, then it's your time to get started with Calendly. See the link in the show notes to learn more. Okay, I got two questions for you. If we're going to post, is there a secret to the type of content we should or how we do it? No, it's not and, a secret, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. You want to start and, with that one? Yeah, let's start with that one. And then and then really the second one is is it okay to put links to other things in there? Yeah. So those are two great questions because what's surprising when it comes to sheer reach on LinkedIn, the worst performing content is video. Okay. And for a lot of people, they're being told, no, video is everything. I'm going to look at TikTok. It lives because of video. But on LinkedIn, oftentimes we don't use LinkedIn video as a means of, com of conversation. What we're using LinkedIn to do is to dump our content material, post and ghost. We're posting and then we're just walking away. Even if we, we didn't even probably show up, we probably use some automated tool to pump that content out and not even show up. So video is usually the worst performing for pure reach. The best, text, text only. Or text with a personal photo or two. And what I mean by that, when I say personal photo, I don't mean using, you know, if you were to announce something, you got a stock photo that goes up there. Very seldom do people comment on those stock photos. Oh, hey, that's an interesting photo of four diverse individuals of a variety of gender backgrounds pointing at that laptop. Are those members of your team? No, that's an iStock photo that everybody has seen. The point here is, is that the photo or image should drive the comments. So if you're writing up a post and then you go look for an image to support it, no, that's the wrong way of doing it. Here's why. Human nature says, I'm going to see your picture. I'm going to see it. I'm going to like it. Click like, and I'm going to move on it will not cause me to stop and have a conversation. It'll do the exact opposite. It'll cause me to stop, click like, hey, I saw it, and move on. Text only causes me to stop and say, I wonder what he's talking about. What's he talking And it's that uh. opening headline. Text only drives conversations or photos. You mentioned my tent. I'm not in my tent today, but I put out a photo about working from home in my tent in my backyard. That caused people to stop and have a conversation about their work from home experiences as well as mine. So that's number one. And the qu second question you asked me was links. LinkedIn wants you to have a conversation on their platform. If you include a link at the time the post goes live to a YouTube video or a TED talk or a Forbes article, where's the conversation going to happen? Somewhere else. LinkedIn is then going to limit your ability to do damage to their platform by driving the audience to some other place. So when that post goes live with that link, Remember I said it was a 10% audience that it's going to test against? No, it's now a 5% audience. It's going to oh, cut wow. that in half and show it to a fraction, a tiny fraction to prevent you from doing damage and driving all their members. Because, I mean, honestly, if somebody threw up a TED Talk, I might go watch the TED Talk, but I am not coming back to LinkedIn and commenting on that unless you're my prospect. Why? Because if you're my prospect and you've shared a link to drive me somewhere else, here's what I'm going to do as a sales technique to get in front of you. I know that almost no one is going to watch your video, read your blog, go to your article, and then come back and participate in a conversation. I almost know that for sure. So what am I going to do as a salesperson trying to get your attention? I'm going to go to your video, your blog, or whatever, read it, come back to LinkedIn, and now have a conversation that says, Mark, I read that interesting blog that you shared. And point number three really stood out for me where it said this. One of the questions I have is, how have you been able to solve this? Or do you see this working? Boom. My prospect is now in a conversation with me, having never met me, but I didn't send them a connection request. I didn't send them a blank email. I didn't give them a cold call. I didn't ask them for a, uh, uh, a, a, a sales call meeting on my calendar. No. I gave them my attention, awareness, asked them a question, legitimized them, and participated in a conversation that no one else is doing. So if you see your prospects sharing content, I'm telling you, it's not reaching anybody. But if wow. you go and engage, you'll stand out so much that that prospect cannot ignore you. 
that really is just putting it into reverse play there. And I love that whole idea. Now, what happens if, if you do have something you want to share? In other words, you know, we'll say it's it, it's some like, like this morning. I posted an article that I, 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 saw, I saw Mark Cuban had done an interview and there were some interesting things. And I posted a little clip. I, I posted some text from it. And then I had a link to the article. Um, was that wrong? Was that good? Was that? It, you know? it wasn't that it was wrong, but what it was is the question is how much of the post did you include so that your audience doesn't have to leave? Okay. So what you'll want to do is go read Mark Cuban's post, the, the, the thing that he did. Now come back. Now you're the author. This is not you commenting. You're the author. Right. Now tell your audience in about 150 to 200 words, everything you want them to know from that article. That's number one. This is a radical departure from marketing. We used to put content out there and try to drive our audience to the content. No, the audience is here. Now bring the content to the audience. And that doesn't mm -hmm. mean a link. That means the meat of what you want them to know right there. Now, if you want the link to be there, there's several ways you can do it. One is to simply hit the post without the link and then edit the post and add the link afterwards. You will take a minor hit. Editing a post within the first 10 minutes causes you to have about a 10% drop in reach. But it's a lot better than the 50% drop that comes from having the link included. A second thing that you can do is add the link in the comments. And up until recently, you could pin a comment to make sure it stayed at the top. That feature has been now discontinued as of this month. The problem with that is if somebody shares your post, the comments don't follow, so the link doesn't follow. Or if you get 100 comments on the post, that link is buried somewhere within those 100 comments. So my recommendation is to add the link after the post goes live. Go and edit it. Now, so here's something that's not going to happen. It will not load that hero image, that preview image, right. which is a good thing because people see that preview image, they click like, and they move on. If you prevent that preview image from loading, you keep people there on the platform engaging with you, reading what you had to say, finding it interesting, and then clicking the link to go to the article. This is absolutely fascinating because you're almost taking us away from that, you know, age old lesson. Oh, create a visual, create a visual, stop the eyeballs. But again, it goes back to what you originally said at the beginning. What is the premise for how LinkedIn makes their money? Yeah. Versus start a conversation. Start a conversation. Hey, this is, we're getting to the end of our show here, but this is absolutely great. And we should say National Speakers Association is where I first met you. That was a year ago. And you're coming back to be the closing speaker again in the February event, correct? Yes, I am. I'm really I, looking forward to it. I, I, what I an honor. Because I'll tell you what, people are still talking about that engagement you did back in February a year ago, because again, you, you blew up so many theories, so many... Ah, misnomer. Now, okay. Now, how do people get in touch with you? Besides, and, and don't say, okay, you can say LinkedIn. Go find <laughs> you on LinkedIn. I, I would hope you say that. But, you know, your website and some other stuff. My website is blisspointconsult.com. www.blisspointconsult.com. My Twitter handle is Richard Bliss. My Facebook handle is Richard Bliss. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can email me, rbliss at blisscorp.com. From a marketing standpoint, I'm all over the map blisscorp, C-O-R-P.com, blisscorp.com. Um, but that's how they can reach me. Also, I've started a new service is that they follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, they can text. I gave a phone number right there in all, every one of my posts now. They can text and type the word LinkedIn, and I will send a weekly update, a uh, LinkedIn tip. Some of the things that I've shared here on a weekly basis, I'll just text you uh, on a weekly basis. So that's something to think about as well. So those are different wow. ways that people can reach me. And, and, and I love it because you really do practice what you preach. And of course, this is what you do. And of course, the fact that you do it for so many CEOs in Silicon Valley says that the work you do must be pretty high quality or they wouldn't be having you back so much. So, hey, we want to thank Richard Bliss. We want to thank you also, the audience, for listening. And thank you, Calendly, for sponsoring today's show and continue to help sales teams focus on driving revenue, prevent scheduling delays, install deals, and let your team focus on what they do best, driving revenue. Request your demo of Calendly today. Hey, I do trust you value the content Richard shared today. And you'll take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Or hey, also maybe LinkedIn. Each week you get two shows. One is short sales insight for me. 
and the second, an interview with a leading sales expert, the Sales Hunter podcast, your answer to cutting edge sales insights. I'm Mark Hunter. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Richard Bliss, for making time for us. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in San Antonio in February. Thanks, Mark.